Okay. So um, what I want to talk about today, most of what I want to talk about today is, um, is cofiber sequences and fiber sequences. And I think that this is going to be uh, review to some extent for a lot of people, but I'm going to do it in a way that is hopefully um, useful for for some some uh, generalizations that we'll make about about spectra in the future. Uh, and some references for what I'm what I'm about to talk about are Peter May's concise course in algebraic topology. There are some notes by Hirschhorn um, called something like the model category. Yeah, so they, this is called the Quillen model category of topological spaces. And there's also this book by Aguilar, Ooh. Aguilar, Gitler, and, and Prieto. Uh, which I don't remember the title, but um, but it's it's kind it's of a neat book. Algebraic that, topology from the homotopical viewpoint, maybe. Thanks, Manuel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is algebraic topology from the homotopical viewpoint. Um, and I remember trying to read this book when I was an undergrad and having basically no idea what was going on. Um, but it, it sort of proves a lot of um, basic theorems about algebraic topology, uh, all from, um, well, from the homotopical viewpoint, from, from the viewpoint that I'm, that I'm sort of about to explain. Okay. Uh, also, I'm not as prepared for this as I'd like to be. So there are going to be some things that I don't know the proof to. Um, so if anyone wants to fill in with, with helpful comments or anything, then, then uh, please jump in. Um, okay, so, uh, so the first thing that I wanna think about are, um, let's, let's think about inclusions of CW subcomplexes. So let's say we have a map Let's say this map is a CW inclusion. So this means X is a CW complex and A is a subcomplex of X. Um, and we can, we can quotient X by A and there are, there are two different natural ways to do this. So one thing we can do is we can form the actual quotient X mod A. Um, we can also form the mapping cone. So So this is defined as, um, as the union of X with the cone of A, where the cone of A is glued to X along this inclusion. Um, I should say, by the way, that, that everything I'm talking about is pointed, uh, although there are unpointed analogs for, for, for all of this stuff that, that are um, fairly simple to define. Um, so, uh, so I should probably define the cone of A. The cone of A is a times an interval where we quotiented by one end of the interval. And we've also quotiented by the base point of A um, along the whole length of the interval. Okay, so why do we think of this as a quotient? Well, um, what this mapping cone does is we've made the image of A and X null homotopic. Okay, so if we had, um, I don't know. Here's if this is X, if this is a inside X, then we could attach this cone, um, and this this cone can be thought of as adjoining a a null homotopy to this um, to this subcomplex A. Okay. Um, now these two, if if uh, in this situation, these two constructions are homotopy equivalent to each other. So um, there is a 
homotopy equivalence. between the, the mapping cone and the actual quotient. There are a few different ways that we can prove this. Um, one way that we can do it is uh, we can notice that inclusions of CW complexes have a special property. Um, they are there are what's called neighborhood deformation retracts. So what that means is there's a neighborhood, an open neighborhood, of A in X, let's say U, such that uh, U deformation retracts onto A. So there is a natural map from the mapping cone to the actual quotient. Um, and what this does is it quotients by the inclusion of the cone. So um, this is the same as the mapping cone mod the inclusion of the cone on A. And, and we have to construct an inverse to this. And basically, we can use the existence of this, um, of this neighborhood, which has A as a deformation retract, to construct a homotopy inverse. So, um, we can define an inverse a homotopy inverse I mean which is the identity on um, outside of this neighborhood U, and inside of U interpolates between the identity and the retraction to A. Okay, um, and I hope you'll forgive me if I don't give more details about this. Um, so this is this is one way to to show that these two constructions are homotopy equivalent to each other. Um, another way is by establishing a certain formal property that CW inclusions have, which is called the uh, homotopy extension property. So, um, so what's the homotopy extension property? So we'll say that a, um, a map of spaces has the homotopy extension property if in any diagram of the following form, Uh, sorry. There always exists a lift like this. Okay, so let me explain what this means. Um, first of all, I is I is the interval, the closed interval from zero to one. Um, I want everything here to be a pointed space. And this, um, this mapping space is the space of unpointed maps. So this is the set of all maps from uh, the interval to y. Um, topologized with the compact open topology. And uh, the base point of this is, um, is the constant map that sends the entire interval to the base point of y. So this has a base point, which is the constant, constant map to the base point. 
Um, given any map like this, I can always evaluate it at zero, and this gives me a map from this from this space to y. Now, if I have a map from something like A into maps from I to Y, um, I can think of that as a homotopy between two maps from A to Y. So the data that we're given is we're given a homotopy between two maps from A to Y and an extension of one of them to X. Uh, and, and the homotopy extension property says that you can then extend the entire uh, homotopy over X. Okay, so let me write that down. Um, so in other words, given two homotopic maps, from A to Y, and an extension of F0 to X, we can extend the entire homotopy over X. So in, the, in this story, do you need some assumption on why being compactly generated or something, or does it not matter? Uh, let me think. Um, I, I think I mainly, I want to talk about compactly generated weak Hausdorff spaces the whole time. Um, I think that you can talk about this. So this is, this is something I don't know super well, but um, there's, a, there's a model category structure on uh, on spaces, and the thing I don't know is whether it's all spaces or spaces satisfying some condition that um, where where these maps are the cofibrations. Um, does anyone else know that? Uh, it's called like the Strom model structure or something. Um, I thought there were model structures even on like all spaces, but maybe the adjunction wouldn't work that you used. Uh, Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, so I, th I think it would be best if we stick to compactly generated weak house door spaces um, for exactly that reason. So, so what, what Remy is saying is that um, if I want to identify uh, maps from A into maps from I to Y with homotopies between maps from A to Y, um, I need to know something about how this how this mapping space behaved and it behaves and it's it's poorly behaved for general topological spaces. Uh, any other questions or comments? Talks about this model structure in the appendix of the book. Uh, which book, Olive? The um, the Barnes Reutzheim book, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so you all can uh, look at that for more information. All right, so um, so uh, here's a lemma. Um, CW inclusions have the homotopy extension property. So the way that we can prove this is um, is uh, the the class of maps having this property is stable under a bunch of natural constructions. So first of all, um, what is a, C, a CW inclusion? Well, what this says is we can start from A and go to X by attaching a bunch of cells one by one. So um, so there's some sequence of maps that looks like this, uh, possibly transfinitely indexed. Um, and eventually we get we get to some um, sorry some some final thing in the sequence which is which is equal to x and each map is is given by attaching a single cell So 
So um, first of all, if we can show that all the maps in this um, in this transfinite composition have the homotopy extension property, then the whole composition has that property as well. Uh, the reason why is, um, well, let's let's say that we have a homotopy uh, between maps from A into some other space Y um, and an extension of it to X. First of all, we can extend the whole homotopy over A1, then we can extend it over A2, and so on and so on and so on. Um, so, uh, so it suffices to show that a map given by attaching a single cell has the homotopy extension property. So attaching a single cell means um, we have some map from a sphere into one of these A betas. And we form the push out like this to give us A beta plus one. Um, so, uh, so we want to show that, that any map of this form has the homotopy extension property. So let's say that we have, <coughs> sorry. Um, so let's say that we have a, uh, one of these diagrams where we have to construct this lift. Um, so since a beta plus one is the push out of this square on the left, it actually suffices to, um, to construct this lift. Okay, so if we can extend the homotopy over this disk, we formed A beta plus one by attaching the disk to A beta. Uh, so, um, so we can extend the homotopy over A beta plus one. Uh, so it really suffices to show um, that an inclusion of the boundary sphere into a disk has the homotopy extension property. So how do we do that? Um, well, let's again think about one of these diagrams. And let's, um, let's unravel this diagram. Uh, so the data that we're given is we're given a map from Sn minus one times an interval uh, union the disk times zero, where these are uh, glued to each other along the boundary sphere times zero. We're given a map from this into, um, into Y, and we want to extend it to a map from uh, the disk times an interval into Y. OK, this is, this is equivalent to, um, to finding a lift in this top diagram. Uh, and we can do this because um, this, uh, the, the source of this map is a retract of the target. Okay, so um, the source looks like uh, oh wait, I need to think about how I draw this. Let me draw the, the, uh, the n equals 1 version instead of the n equals 2 version. Um, so the source looks like this and the target looks like this. And, um, and there's a retraction from the target onto the source that uh, pushes all the inside of this square to these three sides. Okay, so since, since this map is, um, is the inclusion of a, a subspace, or since there exists a, a retraction to this map, um, you can define this extension just by composing with the retraction. So the, the extension in the diagram is you apply the retraction to go back to this space, and then you just apply the map that you're given from that space into Y. OK. Um,
Right. Thanks for that comment, Jeff. Um, now, I think that having, I, I could be wrong about this, but I, I think that having this property implies that, um, that you are automatically a closed inclusion. Uh, um, but don't, don't take my word for that. It definitely implies that you're automatically an inclusion. Um, okay, so what's the point of this? Uh, so let's, let's think about some things that we can do with this property. Um, so suppose we have a diagram where uh, both I and J satisfy the homotopy extension property. And suppose that F is a, a homotopy equivalence. then it is a homotopy equivalence under A. So in other words, there's a homotopy inverse um, G from Y to X such that G composed with F is homotopic to the identity on X and F composed with G is homotopic to the identity on Y. Um, and these homotopies have the property that they don't move the images of A. Um, now, unfortunately, this is one of the things whose proof I did not prepare. Um, so if you want to see the proof for this, uh, you should look at um, May's book, uh, the chapter on co-fibrations. Or maybe somebody somebody knows a quick way to prove this already, um, which would be cool. Uh, okay, so um, but but we're just going to take this for granted for now. So um, so here's an example of how we can use this. Um, let's say that we have any map of CW complexes whatsoever. Uh, so we have a map from A to X where these are both CW complexes. Um, then we can factor this uh, through an object called the mapping cylinder. Sorry, let's say this map is called F. Um, so the mapping cylinder uh, is X union the um, A cross an interval where we've glued the zero end of, of this um, A cross an interval uh, 2x using the map F. Okay, so, um, so first of all, if these are both CW complexes, it's fairly easy to see that the map from A into the mapping cylinder is a CW inclusion. So it satisfies this, um, this homotopy extension property. Uh, second, this map from, from the mapping cylinder to X is a homotopy equivalence. Um, and the, the picture there is So if this is X and this is A, then the mapping cylinder looks like this. Um, and we can map this to X by squishing down the entire cylinder um, to, to this copy of A. Okay, I guess I've drawn an example where, um, where a is actually a 
uh, subspace of X, but um, but the same the same idea works even if if this map A is not an inclusion of any kind. Okay, so um, so the map from the mapping cylinder to X is a uh, is a homotopy equivalence, um, and let's suppose that the map from A to X is already a CW inclusion, or at least already something that satisfies the homotopy extension property. Um, so then we have one of these diagrams uh, where this map is a homotopy equivalence and the lemma implies that it, it's a homotopy equivalence under A. Um, this is a little bit surprising because the uh, so the the natural um, inclusion of A into the cylinder is at the top end of the cylinder, the a, the end that's not cleaved to X. For example, if this map from A to X were not an injection, um, then uh, you want A to actually be a subcomplex of the cylinder, so it has to be the top end and not the bottom end. Um, and so there's a there's a homotopy inverse to this you can define, which is just um, you include X into this. Uh, you, you just send X back to X, um, but that homotopy inverse does not preserve the image of A. Uh, so, um, so the lemma implies that uh, there's a different homotopy inverse which sends this copy of A to the top copy of A. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so this is a homotopy equivalence under A. And now what we can do um, is, uh, so, so since we, we can find a homotopy inverse to this map where, um, which, uh, which preserves A, we can quotient by A and we get a homotopy equivalence between the quotients. So um, the quotient of the mapping cylinder by A is precisely the mapping cone and the quotient of X by A is X mod A. Um, so this is, this is another proof of this proposition that I, that I started talking, that I started the talk with um, that the mapping cone is equivalent to X mod A. So now let's say um, that we have an arbitrary map of spaces, where by spaces I mean compactly generated weak Hausdorff spaces. And by arbitrary, I mean pointed. Um, so we can find weakly equivalent CW complexes uh, let's say a tilde and X tilde in such a way that um, that this diagram commutes so both of these maps are supposed to be weak equivalences and um, and we have a map between the CW complexes, which makes everything commute. Um, this is a version of CW approximation. Um, moreover, uh, if we have a map between CW complexes, then we can find an equivalent, uh, a homotopy equivalent CW complex, X double tilde, um, such that the map from, uh, Sorry, so we can factor this map as, as the composite of a CW inclusion and a, uh, and a homotopy equivalence. Um, so for example, if this map is F and this is F tilde, this could be the mapping cylinder of F tilde. So we define, um, so essentially, essentially what we are doing here is we're replacing our original map F with a weakly equivalent map, which is a CW inclusion. Um, and we define the, the homotopy cofiber
to be the quotient of this CW inclusion. Um, so this is equivalent to the mapping cone of the um, of the map F tilde. Um, we made some choices of approximations here to do this. So this is well defined. up to weak homotopy equivalents. Um, one of the reasons for, um, for doing this kind of construction is it's a model for the, the quotient of, so it's a model for the quotient of A by X, but it, but it constructs it in a way that is, that is homotopy invariant, or at least weakly homotopy invariant. Um, so for example, uh, the simplest example of this is, is where X is a point. So if we have A mapping to a point, um, so the, the actual quotient of the point by A is just the point. Um, but this is also equivalent to uh, the cone on A. And if A is a CW complex, the, then the inclusion of A into the cone on A um, meets our criteria. So the homotopy cofiber of this map is the quotient of the cone on A by A, which is the same as the suspension of A. Okay, which is definitely not so. This is this is not in this case equivalent to the the literal coat fiber, um, which is which is just a point. Okay, so um, let's let's prove. Oh no, let's um, before we prove anything, let's let's continue this construction. So, uh, so if we start out with a map from A to X. Um, let's say that this is a map of CW complexes to make things easy. Uh, then we can form the homotopy cofiber, which is, um, which I'll just write as the cone on F. And then we can continue the sequence. So, um, so we have this natural map from X into the into the cone on F, and we can form the cone. On this on this new map. Okay, but actually this object admits a, a simpler description. So this, again, assuming that these guys are CW complexes, is X union the cone on A along the map F. Um, and now what we're doing is we're attaching, so X is a subcomplex of this, and we're attaching a cone to X. So um, so this is this mapping cone together with a cone attached to X. And it's equivalent to um, the mapping cone mod the image of X, which is the same as the suspension of A. Okay, so there are some pictures that we can draw here. Um, let's say this is A, and it's mapping into X. So then we attach a cone to A. And now we quotient out by X. So uh, what we're left with is, is this, which is the suspension of A. Um, using similar logic, you can, you can continue this sequence. So the cone of this next map um, is equivalent to the suspension of X. Okay. 
Um, so this is called the the pupa sequence attached to uh, uh, associated to the to the map from A to X. Um, Okay, let me write it one more time in a slightly more compact way. And so on and so on. Um, so here's something we can prove about these sequences. Uh, so let Z be any space, any pointed space. There's a long exact sequence, um, which comes from mapping this sequence, uh, this, this pupa sequence into Z. messed up. Um, let me say what this means. So uh, the I, I should really keep writing this, but but we're always talking about pointed spaces here. And this is the one place where it actually matters. Um, the these uh, sets of homotopy classes are sets of pointed homotopy classes of pointed maps. Um, and in particular, these are pointed sets. So, uh, so inside each of these sets, there's the homotopy class of the, the map, which sends everything to the base point of Z. Um, so, uh, so it makes sense to talk about long exact sequences of pointed sets. Uh, and what that means is that the image of each of these maps is equal to the kernel of the next map, meaning that the set of things um, meaning the, the pre-image of the base point in, in each set. So this is a, a long exact sequence of pointed sets. Uh, let me write that over here. Um, now, in addition, uh, once we start getting to the, the terms in the sequence which have suspensions on them, um, these stop being just sets and they start being groups. So uh, we should also note that um, something like maps from suspension of X into Z is a group for any X and maps from suspension to X into Z is an abelian group. So once you get far enough to the left, this becomes a long exact sequence of groups. And once you get even farther, it becomes a long exact sequence of abelian groups. Um, okay, I can, if, if people want me to talk about this, I can, I can say more about, about why this is true. Um, but essentially the point is that a suspension has a, uh, a co-group structure um, up to in, in the homotopy category. Uh, someone said something in the chat. Okay. Um, uh, Jeff messaged me something that looks too complicated for me to, to figure out on the spot. So um, we should talk about that afterwards. Uh, okay. So, um, so let's prove this. So um, this, uh, this comes from mapping in this, this enormous sequence. Um, but and if you pick out any three terms in this sequence, um, they're, they're always something of this form. So, um, so, so the, up, to, up to homotopy, at least, or up to weak homotopy equivalents, I mean, um, you can represent them as mapping a subcomplex into something and then, and then taking the, the mapping code of that. Um, 
So it, it really suffices to show that that this is exact, the the first the sequence made up of the first three terms, um, because all the other subsequences of three terms are um, are uh, are also of this form. Okay, so it suffices it suffices to show that this is exact. So in other words, we need to show that the image of the map from maps from, from cone on F into Z to maps from X into Z is the same as the kernel of the map from maps from X into Z into maps from A into Z. Um, so let's suppose that, that we have a map from, um, Uh, such that f restricted to a is null homotopic. So this is something in the. Uh, let me give these guys names. Um, let's say this is phi and this is theta. So, so f is in the kernel of theta. Um, so there are a couple ways to think about this. One is that um, the, the null homotopy of F restricted to A gives you a way to attach a cone on A to X and extend, extend the map. Um, so F extends to X union with the cone on A, um, where the extension is just given by the null homotopy of F restricted to A. Uh, another way is you can use the homotopy extension property. Um, to, to prove this directly. Uh, so this shows that anything in the kernel of theta is in the image of phi that extends over the cone on F. And conversely, um, so suppose that suppose we have a map F from X to Z, uh, which extends to So I've done something very bad. I've used um, I've used F for multiple maps. Let me call this like uh, Q. So conversely, suppose we have Q from X to Z which extends to um, a map from the cone on F to Z. So this is the same as X union with the cone on A. Um, and what this is, and so if we think about Q restricted to A, um, then uh, Q restricted to A is a map from A to Z, which extends over the cone on A. So Q restricted to A is null homotopic. Okay, so that shows anything in the image of phi is in the kernel of theta, um, which shows that this, this sequence is exact. Okay, um, so let's, let's notice something about this. Um, if we, uh, th this, is, this is kind of the place that long exact sequences on cohomology come from, as long as we know that our cohomology functors are representable. So for example, it, um, if we know that ordinary cohomology is represented by maps into eilenberg maclane spaces, let's think about the case where Z is an eilenberg maclane space. Um, so, so we get a sequence uh, that looks like this. Um, Using the loop suspension adjunction, these terms with the suspensions in them can be written as things like maps from A into loops KZN. And loops KZN is the same as uh, KZ n minus one. So what this gives us is an exact sequence that um, 
that looks like this. If we know that KZN is an infinite loop space, then actually we know um, we know how to extend the sequence forever to the right as well. Uh, so, um, so I think this is really neat uh, because ordinarily the way that these, these sorts of long exact sequences are constructed is you show that there's a, a short exact sequence of some kind of chain complex, a cellular chain complex or something. And then, um, and then uh, the, those short exact sequences induce long exact sequences on homology and cohomology. Um, but this is actually something that comes directly from topology. So this, this sequence um, is, is, uh, comes out of these topological constructions and, um, and yeah, it's, it's like, it's the equivalent of one of these cohomology long exact, long exact sequences that, that uh, exists um, purely in topology. Okay, um, all right. So there are a few other things that, that I should say. Um, one is uh, some some other cases of this concept. So um, so I've avoided mentioning the word cofibration because um, I, I guess because of the existence of these different model structures where cofibration means different things. Um, but one thing that we should maybe notice uh, if we go back up to my proof that CW inclusions have the homotopy extension property is that this actually proves something somewhat more general. So um, so to, so first of all, A does not have to be a CW complex. A can be any space where we get from A to X by attaching cells. Um, so instead of thinking about just a CW inclusion, we could think about a relative CW complex. Um, we could also notice that to define a CW complex, you have to attach cells, uh, in dimension order. So you have to um, start with a bunch of zero cells, attach a bunch of one cells, and then a bunch of two cells, and so on and so on. Uh, but we didn't use that fact in um, in in showing that these maps have uh, have the homotopy extension property. Okay, so this exact same proof allows us to prove a more general result, um, which is that actually. Uh, A map from A to X has the homotopy extension property if it's a relative cell complex so in other words we get X from A by attaching cells not necessarily in dimension order Um, so probably the most useful definition of cofibration and um, the definition of cofibration we, we may actually want to be thinking about most of the time uh, is a retract of a relative cell complex. Um, so you can, you can also notice that the, the property of having the homotopy extension property is uh, is preserved by, by retract. Um, okay. Uh, and finally, um, if we want to think about simplicial sets instead of spaces, then there's an analog of this homotopy extension property uh, instead of topological spaces. There's an analog. Um, Let me say it this way. Any um, any inclusion of a a simplicial subset uh, is a cofibration, 
and satisfies the analog of the homotopy extension property. Okay. All right, so now I wanna dualize everything um, and talk about fibrations instead of cofibrations and about fiber sequences instead of cofiber sequences. So, and part of the reason of mentioning something, something abstract like the homotopy extension property when, I, when we could have spent the entire time talking about CW inclusions or something like that um, is that uh, to dualize it, it's, it's more natural to dualize the homotopy extension property. Um, so what we'll say is that a map from E to B is a serif vibration If lifts exist in any diagram of the following form. Okay, so if I have a map from um, from a disk into E, and I have a, a homotopy starting, so let's say this, this map is F. Um, if I have a map F from a disk into E, and I have a homotopy starting at F um, in B, then I can lift the whole homotopy to E. Okay, so this is called the, um, the homotopy lifting property. It's equivalent to say that lifts exist in any diagram that looks like this. Where X is a CW complex. There is a stronger notion of vibration where we require these lifts to exist um, for any space whatsoever. Uh, but again, this, this stronger notion is maybe not going to be the most useful one for us. Um, so uh, so the, the, uh, the most familiar example of, of maps of spaces that satisfy this property are, um, are fiber bundles. So if, if uh, E to B is a fiber bundle, Um, so in other words, B has a cover by open subsets U alpha such that um, such that the pre-image of U alpha is isomorphic. Uh, to U alpha times some constant uh, fiber over U alpha. Then it's a serif vibration. Um, we can, we can make dual statements to the ones that we made about, about cofibrations for fibrations. So for example, uh, any map of spaces can be replaced by an equivalent serif vibration. Um, so given, given any map X to Y, um, we can form the, the, I think it's called the mapping path space. Um, and I forget what the standard notation for this is, but. Uh, 
So what this is, is it's the space of, um, of pairs of a point in Y Um, am I doing this right? I may not be doing this right. Uh, I think I want to say a path from the. Sorry, just the, all the time, all the times you start at that point. Uh, can you say that again? So all of the, the paths that at time zero are at that point? Um, they, they start from the image of F. So I, sorry, I fix a point in X, right? And I, uh, and I. Point in X path from the image. Yes, you know. thank you. Yeah, so it's a, it's a point in X and a path. Um, so a map from the interval to Y. Uh, starting at f of x. Um, thank you, both of you. Uh, okay, so this this has a natural map to y um, given by evaluating at the other the other endpoint of the interval. So um, so this map is evaluate at one. Um, the map from from PF to Y is a is a zero vibration, and the the map from X to PF is a is a homotopy equivalence or a weak homotopy equivalence. I mean, um, so what we can do is we can define the homotopy fiber. to be um, the fiber, and by fiber, I mean the, the pre-image of the base point for an equivalent uh, serif vibration Um, and again, this is this is well defined up to weak homotopy equivalents. Um, and like we did before, uh, you can you can write down these sequences um, And once you start going far enough in this direction, uh, you get loop spaces of of the things before in the sequence. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have uh, time to to show you that, but maybe maybe a, a nice exercise would be to to figure out why um, the the homotopy fiber of of this map from the homotopy fiber to X is a is the loop space of Y. Um, and uh, for any CW complex uh, A, there is a long exact sequence of pointed sets. which looks like this. Um, and once you get to this point, um, these start to be groups. Once you start mapping into a double loop space, they start to be abelian groups. Uh, so in particular, if you take A to be um, the zero sphere, uh, this, uh, this recovers for you the long exact sequence on homotopy associated to, to a vibration. Um, but the statement is very much dual to the one, um, the one that was made about cofiber sequences. Okay, so I'm, um, so it's uh, 7 p.m. here now, so I should probably stop. Um, but if there are other things that people wanna talk about, I'm definitely down to like hang around and talk more about, about this stuff. 
are looped spaces group objects in the homotopy category then? They are, yeah. Um, so, so maybe I can say why. Um, so there's, there's a, the multiplication map on a loop space is, um, is you compose the loops. Uh, so if I have, um, if I have two loops in X, uh, I can think of them as maps from an interval to X. Oops. With the property that both ends of the interval go to the base point of X. Um, and then what I can do is, uh, is I can um, form the map, which is which is given by F in between, which is given by F with, with twice the speed in between zero and one half and, uh, and G with twi twice the speed in between one half and one. Um, if I have three maps, so this isn't, this isn't strictly associative, but it's homotopy associative. If I multiply yeah. F and G, do I, do I not need to say this? Uh, oh, no, I, I, yeah, I think I get it. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. Um, yeah, and inverses are you go backwards along the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you can speak about the co-group structure of the yeah, sure suspensions, I'd be interested in that. Um, yeah, and uh, Josh said the exact same thing just now. Um, yeah, so so. Let's see. Uh, so this is one of these things. So it's easier for me to draw a picture than, than to, to write down the definition. But maybe if I draw the picture, then, then we can figure out the definition. So, um, so here's, a, here's a suspension. Um, and what you want to do is you want to pinch it in the middle. So uh, Okay, so so um, how do we make this this formal? Well, there's there's this um, there's this interval coordinate which goes from zero to one uh, in the in the suspension. So in other words, the suspension is the quotient of x times the interval by a bunch of stuff. Um, and all we want to do is when we want to we want to contract the um, the the copy of x that lives at one half. Um, and then and then check that what we get is is equivalent to suspension of x wedge suspension of x. Is, one one way to say this right is that the suspension of x is s one smash x, and then mm -hmm. s one is a cogroup object, and then you just keep the, those diagrams on s one, basically. Yeah, that's probably a much nicer way to say it, actually. Um, so we have this co-group structure on S1, which is, which comes from the, a, a similar sort of pinch map. And, um, and then, and then we just need to know that the smash product distributes over the, over the wedge sum. Yeah, so that's, that's great. Um, okay, so Jeff messaged me something about CW approximations. Uh, and unfortunately, this was 20 minutes ago, so I've already forgotten what I was talking about. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, if anyone, if anyone wants to leave, um, please feel free to leave. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording too.